what was Hurricane Hazel like when it came ashore? I had been out the night before, almost all night. I got home. It was raining cats and dogs. I said, I'm going to sit here in my car for a little while until the rain stops and go, go in the house. And uh, just shortly after daylight, my stepdad was knocking on the window. Hey, boy, come in the house. It's going to storm. It's storming. So I went in the house, and the car was more solid than the house. And <laughs> we weathered the storm out in the house. And that, that was the first thing I ever heard about a hurricane or what they are. So what did you know to do? Nothing. We, we, we knew absolutely nothing because when I was a child growing up, I, I suppose we had hurricanes, you know, offshore. But my mother always said, son, it's a storm out sea. And uh, they stayed out sea. You weren't expecting it to come in. in no, we, we had never I, I, we had never had a storm like that or anything near that. So, how did you you didn't know to prepare for it? Absolutely not. Knew nothing. So you just waited it out, and when everything was over, what did you do? Well, the first thing my stepdad wanted to go to the beach, the Holden Beach, which is near here. And we went down and, and looked at all the boats that were washed up on the hill. One house left on Holden Beach. And uh, we just, we were there shortly after the storm. And my stepdad thought that was great, that he was a first-hand knowledge of all this stuff that had happened. What was Ham, Ham Radio's role in Hurricane Hazel? I had a little 30-watt AM transmitter and a, a gunset receiver that mounted on the steering column on 75 meters. And uh, I, I got on the radio to see what was happening. And I was heard somewhere, and uh, the people in Raleigh asked, uh, some, of the, some of the people, they talked to me, and asked me, could I go to Bolivia, which is about 20 miles between here and Wilmington, and I said, yes. So I went to Wilmington, or went to Bolivia, and they set me up I don't, I, I, outside in front of the school. And uh, all I had was a, a 49 Dodge, but I, I had a good battery. <laughs> but it took the vibrator radio and all that to hear a ham radio. So I, I suppose I burned a half a tank of gas, had to keep the engine running or I wouldn't have a battery. Well, I think that it was the beginning or the first part of the uh, 3923 group. And they had some sort of a uh, procedure set up. I'm not sure. But the guy at Raleigh, I can't remember his name now. He was a real nice fella. Max Silvers. He was involved, and somehow or other, I had met Max uh, while I worked in Wilmington during, the, before, right after I came back out of, out of the military. And Max knew where I was when he was talking about Shalot and this area, and they needed somebody up in Bolivia. I don't know what we had in Shalot. Well, we had one telephone at that time in Shalot. That was before... Atlantic Telephone started because it only got going in 55 or started. So they asked me to go to Bolivia. So I went there. And the questions that I was asked was by the sheriff and some of those people. And uh, I would see, I would transmit their information to Raleigh. Or I say I would transmit it to Raleigh. I'm not sure it's been so long. Who really picked it up? But it, anyway, it got to Raleigh, to the officials that were looking for it. What kind of messages did you pass? What was the, what was the traffic? Basically, health and welfare, conditions. Uh, did we know of any, they, they asked if they're known of any known deaths or serious injuries or, uh, great, or, or a lot of, of uh, oh, what's my, destruction, you know. And uh, 
things of that nature. There was no formal, no formality, and it was it was basically informal information. The message would come from Raleigh. They would say, "Ask about so and so." Not not any official names given. It was basically, Jim, ask what about so and so? What about this? What about that? Do you need water, food, and things of that nature? And those people would just were listening. They would get this information, and they write on a little note, and I would send it back to them. The Coastal Carolina Emergency Net regards Hurricane Hazel as the beginning of the net. Uh, what was uh, what was the net's origin, and when did it become a formal net? We used Hurricane Hazel as the beginning time because that's when all this hurricane stuff started people started knowing about it and what have you the coastal carolina emergency net was organized by w4baw in newburn and some of the people up there were not happy with the way that they wanted information passed back and forth with all the formality word counts and all this kind of stuff. Well, I'm being an old Air Force radio operator flying on an airplane. All of our stuff was non-formal, informal traffic, because if you had to draft a message of where you were and when you were going to get to another point, and if you needed weather and all this at, at 150, 200 miles an hour, you'd be out of range. So everything was informal. You ask a question and got an answer. Ask a question and got an answer or the other way. And this started the Coastal Carolina Emergency Net of the informality. And we dropped all of the formality that ARRL and some of the other people required. And uh, this is the way it's we, you know, we even say now, informal traffic. We found that what we were doing, the informality, was the only thing that got our stuff going, or kept it going, because we had stations located near the affected areas, and the other nets in the state had already covered the uh, the stuff about. Uh, beds and needs and this kind of thing and we went back to the like people would, uh, would want to know about a about a friend that was at the beach ha on vacation or my family lives so and so my so and so lives over here can you help me and this got us started and we got real deep in that kind of thing, and that's the way we've stayed all those years. Welcome, welcome. Welcome to the Coastal Carolina Emergency Net. Call in the Coastal Carolina Emergency Net. Call in the Coastal Carolina Emergency Net. This is K4AYZ Net Control tonight. The name here is Jim, common spelling, Japan, India, Mexico. My location is Shalot, North Carolina. And uh, we invite non-members, friends, visitors, passerbyers, anybody interested to check in, and we'll give you a chance to do so just after the membership roll call. Let's begin. Do we have any traffic for the net? If so, call K4AYZ. Some would say that ham radio, that a ham radio net is just a bunch of old guys like us sitting around talking on the radio. I agree. What? <laughs> What's your response to that? I agree, and it's a lot of fun. But don't sell us short, because when the push comes to shove, we're there to help you.